How's it going, old schoolers? You are kicking it old school at Russell JS on the weekly NARC. I know I haven't made a video for this platform in two weeks because it's supposed to be weekly, but lots happened in the last couple weeks since the last video I made. You know, my father has been sick with cancer and I've been taking care of him and the internet went out, you know, about a couple days ago I was going to make a video. I was going to make a video about the whole thing with narcissism and, oh, there we go. And, you know, I was going to talk about the, fa the, three, the three or four phases of what happens with narcissism. And, you know, I was thinking to myself where I was going to go and, you know, make a separate channel where, you know, I do, I would do the whole kicking it old school with Russell J.S., you know, with all the old school stuff with the games and the music and the talk about TV shows and everything. But I thought to myself, you know what? I'm chewing on a mint here. <laughs> I thought to myself, you know, why don't I just keep the one channel and I could do Kicking It Old School with Russell J.S. along with the Weekly Narc. And I was like, you know what? Cinemassacre does that. You know, Cinemassacre, which is home of the angry video game nerd and, you know, and all the other stuff that Cinemassacre has. And I was like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have both video shows all on one channel. So, you know, those of you who are new to the channel, if you like what you see, hit a like, hit a subscribe, and leave a comment in the box below. All right, what I want to go ahead and bring about with... This being the weekly, this video show being the weekly narc. I want to talk about, I'm going to, this first video, this one video is going to be about the phases of narcissism when you get with a narcissist without even knowing. The first phase is the love bombing. Okay, you're probably asking, what is love bombing? Well, love bombing is when the narcissist first meets you instantaneously they want to get hooked to you they want to just dig their claws right into you when they decide that you're gonna be their target their victim and here's what they do I mean when it comes now we're all equals as human beings male and female I'm gonna go on how the males take to the love bombing and the females here's what happens okay now, ladies, this is for you, okay? You Don't mind me, I just had chicken wings tonight. I went out and <laughs> so I'm, I got a little bit of the burps there. But think of it as, you know, you're getting out all that narcissism and everything. But anyway, what I want to talk about is the love bombing phase. The love bombing phase is when the narcissist decides you're going to be their target out of all the people they see. They look for the most vulnerable and empathic person that they can find there. And it doesn't necessarily, they don't necessarily come for you, you know, like say being at the church or, you know, just like, I mean, or should I say a bar? I'm a little tired, but you know, I've, it's been a while since I made a video. But the thing is, everybody thinks that, you know, you meet these narcissistic people, say, at a bar or in a club, which my father used to say, you know, all the times I've gotten with women where they turned out to be real narcissistic and they had been users and everything, my father used to say, you got to quit meeting women in bars. But that's not necessarily the case. You see... <sighs> And it goes for all narcissists. You know, you can meet a narcissistic person, not just at a bar or a club. You can meet them, you could be in the public library. You can meet them at, say, a church function. You can meet them, you know, when you're in the checkout line at the grocery store. Say, you're at Walmart. Or down here in Florida, we have Winn-Dixie or we have Publix. You know, you could be at the grocery line, you know, checking out your groceries, and you meet them right then and there. Or, 
you know, for example, I actually encountered a narcissist, on, a narcissistic woman on New Year's Eve during the day while I was at a store buying something. And we got to talking and everything like that. She had talked about how she was some kind of artist or something, or she made jewelry. And, you know, she seemed like a nice girl, so we exchanged information, phone numbers, and, you know, sent friend requests to each other on Facebook. And later on that night, she called me up and asked if I wanted to hang. And I'm like, okay. So we, hang, we hung out on New Year's Eve at night. <clears throat> and the thing was, I was starting to see a lot of red flags with this. What I was sensing was this woman was definitely a narcissist. I mean, she had all the traits because I had been there before with narcissistic women. And the whole time she was on her cell phone texting, talking about everything about her. I couldn't get a word out about me until she decided when she said, oh, let's talk about you, you know? And then what happened was one of her friends called her on vid chat, and she's like, oh, you're not going to believe what I'm doing for the first time in years. I'm on an actual date. And I'm thinking to myself, whoa, hold up, time out, time out. No, this isn't a date. We were just going to hang out. That's it. And one of the red flags I saw was I asked her for her address so I could put it in the GPS and come pick her up. She wanted to meet me over at a store. You know, she wanted to meet me at a store where she'll leave her vehicle there. We'll just go out in my vehicle. And all we did was drive around and waste gas. And I got to hear her life story and blah, blah, blah. One of the things that she also showed me was a video she sent to, I guess, who was going to become a former friend where... She told this friend, don't ever call again, you're dead to me, and all this other stuff. And there was another red flag right there. And the fact that she wouldn't give me her address so I could go pick her up, you know. pick. I mean, I thought to myself, what's the harm? But you know what, maybe she was looking for, you know, she might have had, maybe she had a boyfriend that she didn't tell me about. And she wanted to get back at him for something. She was mad at him, so she was going to go hang out with some other guy. And there I was. I couldn't wait for this thing to end. You know, and when she decided, okay, well, happy new year, once we rung in the new year, you know, like, I explained to her how I've got things like a kid. You know, even though I was kicked out of my daughter's life, you know, still she is a part of my life no matter what she's going to be. And, you know, my father being sick and everything. And she was okay with that. I said, I'm going to be busy for the next week or so. Two days later, I get texts from her, angry texts, where she's accusing me of being a narcissist. I mean, I knew right from the get-go this wasn't going to work out. And, you know, always have that backup. You know, say something like, you're going to be busy for the next week or something like that. When you know this isn't going to work out. Word of advice right there. If you sense in your mind that something's not right with this other person, you know, there's your there's your way to bail out, you know, be polite and everything. That's exactly what I did. I mean, that was my way of saying, look, we had a good time, but I don't think this is going to work out. You know, we could still be friends, you know, but that's it. And there she was sending me all, all day long, two days later, and I'm like, you know, and then she, you know, she brought up the whole thing with my daughter saying that, you know, me and her mother were two irresponsible, you know, childlike adults who should have used protection or whatever. And the moment she brought up my kid, you know what, I went over to her Facebook, I unfriended her, and I blocked her, and then I blocked her number on my phone. And that was the end of that. Now, she didn't even get the chance to love bomb me because I think after a while she realized, you know, I was wise to the whole narcissist thing. And she knows that she's a narcissist. But, um, but yeah, the thing is, you know, like the love bombing, girls, this is going to be for you when it comes to the guys, okay? See, the thing is, 
these guys that are narcissists, if, if you meet this one guy and you go on a few dates, let him know you want to get to know him. Okay, you want to be friends for a little bit and see where it goes from there. This will be a test. And nine times out of ten, they may fail the test. The test being, you know, that means no intimate, you know, in other words, no sex, no, you know, none of that. Can hold hands, but, you know, kisses on the cheek, that's it. No making out. Because if if you tell them and they decide, you know what, hey, this, I'm sorry, this isn't going to work out. You know what, they weren't worth your time, so don't get sad. Okay, because that's what the narcissist men want. Now, guys, this is for you. When it comes to narcissistic women, narcissistic women will do the same as narcissistic guys do to the empathic women. What they will do is they will, they will go ahead and want to, after maybe a week or two weeks, they'll want, to, want you to be their boyfriend. And then they'll, you know, and they'll do the same thing. This is both... They will go ahead and they will they will throw themselves at you, willing to give you sex and everything like that. And here's the thing, they'll go ahead and they'll tell you that they love you. And they'll go ahead and say, come over to your work, bring you lunch, bring you gifts, you know, buy you stuff and everything like that. Oh, you're my man, I gotta treat my man right. They'll invite you over, cook you dinner and everything like that. And, you know, all of a sudden you're their man and, you know, you have more sex and they're going to get you hooked. Okay. If this hasn't happened to you before, they're going to have you hooked and they're going to make you addicted to them like a drug. I know this because this has happened to me before and it happened quite a few times. You know, some will say, but Russell, you know, if it happened to you once, you should have learned from that. Well, sometimes it does take, you know, a few times for you to really learn where you get tired of the BS about, you know, say, oh, you know, I mean, yeah, sure, the sex might be wonderful and everything like that, but guys, think with this head up here, okay? This is where the brain is at. The brains ain't down there. All right, same thing with you ladies. Your brains are up here, not down in your JJ. okay? You know, and, and here's the thing, you know, after a while, that ends. You know, they're giving you less and less sex and doing for you less and less after a while. And they're going to be, pretty soon they're going to be, when they're going to be wanting you to give to them, you know, it's like they're going to want you to, like, take them shopping and, you know, do this, do that, spend some money. And when the time comes when you don't have money to spend anymore, through it all, what they're doing is they're out there when you're not, when you're not around, they're out there looking for new supply. They're out there, they're out there finding other men to groom and once they've drained you, and there they are, they've got you head over heels for them, in love with them. They've already got somebody else waiting in line for them. And they're going to be saying to that other person, like, yeah, I'm going to leave him because he's possessive, and he's this, he's that, he's the other thing, and da-da-da. And then they're going to go give you the news that, hey, they're going to find a way just to tell you, hey, I'm done with you, you know, you can't afford to take care of me anymore and you know I, I gotta find me somebody that will be willing to take care of me a lot better they'll figure out that way and then they'll leave you high and dry with nothing now ladies the guys will do the same thing they'll show up at your work with flowers a box of chocolates want to take you to lunch and all this other stuff and they're going to want sex from you all the time. This is why I was saying at the beginning of this video, you know, this is because I'm trying to, I want to help people out there. I mean, I want to help you understand what you're getting yourself into. If, you know, right away they want to go ahead and make it a full-fledged relationship. You're going to, you're, 
chances are you're dealing with a narcissist. <clears throat> you are dealing with a narcissist. And let me tell you something, ladies. Don't think for one minute that these guys don't have any other ladies lined up. Because they are playing a game. And what happens is, you know, there were guys out there who you thought weren't your type. Let me clue you in on a little something. They actually are your type and you don't even know it. Those are the guys that are going to love you, that are going to treat you right. You know, they have their heart to give. They have a lot of heart and they're out there. And you know what? They're going to accept you for who you are and they're going to love you. And guys, there's women out there that you know, aren't going to make you go on expensive shopping sprees and, you know, cause you to lose money. And I mean, because a lot of you out there, you have kids. You got kids to take care of. And here's the thing. Sometimes these people, they'll try and make it to where they're more important than your kids. I mean, I could tell you, I mean, I'm going to tell you stories as I'm coming up with these videos on narcissism. I'm going to tell you stories about, you know, what I experienced. I mean, I actually got rejected. A girl was flirting with me years ago. And when she found out I had a daughter who lived in another state, she still rejected me after a while because you know why? She said most of the time when I date guys who have kids... They put their kids first and me second, and I can't have that. I can't date anyone with guys, you know, guys with kids. And let me tell you something, ladies. If you're a single mom raising your kids on your own, and they say that, it's because they want to be first. And they want your kids second. And you know what? It really, it doesn't matter how good these people look. I mean, you guys, you can find yourself a woman who looks like Jennifer Aniston in her prime or Megan Fox, has a nice body, looks good in a bikini, everything. But let me tell you what, all you see is a facade. That's what you see. It's a facade. It is the shell of, it is actually a shell of, you know, what's not, what it really isn't. And ladies... That good-looking guy you fall for that, you know, takes you out and wines and dines you for the moment. Sure, he looks like Brad Pitt or, you know, Chris Hemsworth. But let me tell you that what you see on the outside is just a shell again. And after a while, you know, like, you were, you were, probably, you were probably groomed yourselves as new supply when, um, at one point. And here's the thing. Sometimes, you know, you just got to watch out. But I want to give you that advice. If, you know, guys and girls, if you start, you meet somebody and right off the bat after a week or so or a couple days, they want to be in a full-fledged relationship with you and they're throwing the I love you's at you, keep your guard up. Okay, you tell that person, tell that man, tell that woman, Let's get to know each other. Let's take things slow. Give them a test. And let me tell you what. I'd say, I'd say that make that test at least a month. That means kisses on the cheek. Those are free. Smiles. And, you know, carry yourself well. Your head up. Your shoulders back. Everything. Because let me tell you what. If they don't want to take things slow, they're not worth your time. Anyway, this is the this is a video of the first phase of narcissistic relationships, how they get how they start and how they end. The next video I make, it will be on the gaslighting. You know, which which is when they start going arguing with you, saying, I don't know what you're talking about, and blah blah blah. But, you know, I'm going to have both these video shows on this channel and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do the Kicking It Old School and the Weekly Narc on both on this channel. And again, if you're new here and you like what you see, 
hit a, you know, feel free to hit a like, feel free to subscribe, and feel free to leave a comment in the box. And, you know, share me, share with me some of your stories of encountering narcissists, because I'm going to be sharing a lot about narcissism on this platform as well. So as always, just like on Kicking It Old School, this is your old pal Russell J.S. wanting to wish you all Godspeed. May the Force be with you always, and be safe out there. Watch yourselves. See you in the next video. Namaste. God bless. Peace. Love. To all of you.